the name is partner with that KBC. Um, four years ago, um, it, be, it, it, started, it was being started up by a local company, two Intra Brothers. Um, as a partnership, very important because at that time we didn't have any clue, any expertise about startups and about te technology companies. So that's why uh, Telenet, Kronos, Join, and DC Accenture, Mobile Vikings, EMEC, and at that time it was iMind uh, and some local ac academic partners uh, came into the partnership. Um, and what do we do over there? We help founders from the startups from ID to sustainable business. Uh, like uh, if you look at uh, the startup life cycle, uh, they always go to uh, the value of debt, how they call it. Uh, and we try to make the value of debt less deep and uh, less wide. And that's what we do with startup BBC. We don't have any focus, so we are all incubators, they have a focus like only on life science, only on health. Uh, we don't have this focus, we focus on innovative, scalable businesses. Uh, and why is this? Because we believe that all these kind of different uh, domains uh, and people that they can learn from each other. If you are active in the creative sector, you can definitely learn from people from a high tech se uh, sector, but also vice versa. Uh, so by putting those people together, uh, you really get a kind of community uh, helping each other. So no focus, if you go to the website also, and you can like uh, look at uh, the startups that are in the incubator, if you look at sectors, it's very, very broad. Um, in 2014, we started with 28 startups, uh, and we thought that was a limit. Um, <coughs> because uh, we had uh, three spaces, three uh, floors in Antwerp, in the Boomerdorn, um, that we um, opened for startups, and we thought like, okay, 21, then it's full. Uh, but it's not like that, so, uh, because uh, most of it's a kind of co-working space, so people start sharing desks and so on, you are not every, every day over there, um, so it's like more like a virtual community. So we saw that it's, it's possible to grow, and, uh, and I think today we are having 510 startups uh, in the accelerator, incubator, community, whatever. Um, What's the offer? If you think about starting up a business, uh, what's, what do you get if you apply now? Uh, I'll start it. Well, you get this office space, it's a co-working space. We, have, uh, we are of the six uh, most important uh, cities in, in Belgium, uh, in Flanders uh, and Brussels. Uh, there where universities are, like Antwerp, Ghent, Leuven, Hasselt, Kortrijk uh, and Brussels. Uh, we have experts on the floor, um, so experts can be like legal experts, accounting experts, uh, sales experts, marketing experts and so on. Um, they all um, offer their services for free over there. Um, we started up an academy, it's a kind of entrepreneurship academy. We started up from zero, asking the first startups like, okay, what do you want to learn? Uh, what do you what what's, what are you missing uh, from coming from university coming from work uh, and like this we build up this academy uh, by trial and error a lot of those workshops also already uh, also stopped like uh, because there was no interest but the ones that are there now are all about building your business sales and marketing finance and products uh, and building products because these are the needs that most of the people uh, uh, are asking for. Um, the network is huge. We open up our network, uh, like I already told in the beginning. It's a partnership. All the partners have a lot of them. have a big network. Also, like ABC, we have a huge network. Uh, we always tell them, like to, to startups, like okay, if you want to have an introduction, uh, no matter who in the world, we only two phone calls away from this introduction. All the startups they get a mentor. Um, these mentors are most of them are real entrepreneurs. Uh, some of them are like uh, coming from the partners. Um, and it's like a paid for principle also. Like four years ago, the first startups that entered uh, the incubator, uh, paid forward wise, uh, they are becoming mentored also within startups after a couple of years, giving back uh, their knowledge. We also have a special program buy from startups because of uh, a lot of corporates uh, came to start it. Like, okay, we want to innovate, we want to, and we also need to change and so on. Can you help us? Can you bring us in contact with some startups who can do this, 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 this? And then we go there with a buy from startups. We go there with 10 startups 
for the half day and then uh, yeah, hopefully some business comes out. Uh, we also do a lot of events uh, because it's very important that people come out of the building, that they talk with each other. If you don't do this, it's very hard to start up a business. Uh, and we give the stage to the startups as much as possible. Uh, and one more thing, yeah, more, more, it's all for free. We offer it for free. It's a non-profit uh, uh, starting at KPC, so it's not KPC. It's a separate entity. It's a non-profit where all the partners are in. Um, and we believe in the paid forward principle that uh, people, uh, if they uh, they go a lot on this incubator, uh, that they think about KPC if they need a bank, that they think about Accenture and so on, but we don't oblige anything because that's not the way how it works. Um, also paid forward to each other. We have um, one of the biggest assets of the community is our Facebook community. It's a closed one where all the startups help each other. Uh, all kind of questions they ask over there and then right away you get answers from other startups who are in the community. It's a community of around 1,000 people for the moment. Um, and uh, for me, I, this is what really like the, the brain, uh, all the knowledge of startups is in the Facebook. Um, and be an ambassador. Like if you're a startup, uh, we try to put you uh, to get you into the press, for instance. Also, if you have a press release and so on, we help you with this. Uh, but we also like to be mentioned. Uh, so, if you're interested, just go to the website. If you want to start up a business, apply now. And otherwise, you can uh, um, yeah leave your email over there and uh, we have the newsletter. Why do we do this at KBC? Because that's my job, uh, being an innovation banker uh, and an innovation manager also. Uh, we learn a lot from the startups. In the last couple of years, we really got a lot of knowledge, a lot of insights in how the world is changing and how we have to change as a company, as a big corporate also. Uh, so based on started, uh, we started up some new businesses like Bolero Crowdfunding. Was never, uh, we never started without started. Uh, they started funds, uh, the innovation bankers, uh, some new apps from KBC which are co-developed co with some startups and so on. So that's really like, it's a big ship, it's a big tanker, a corporate, but you can change it also at the, uh, the pace that the ship needs, but it's happening. So that's why we do it. So coming to the topic, starting your company, how to set up and challenge a business plan, was the title. Um, if I have to start a topic, I first go to Wikipedia to have a look at, okay, what's the business plan? What's, what are they telling over there? Uh, so this is the definition which is on the Wikipedia. Uh, a formal statement of business goals, reasons they are attainable, plans for reaching them. It may also contain background information about the organization, the team, to reach those goals. Talking about three to five year business plan, is required. This, this is on Wikipedia. But is, it, is it required? And starting up a business, is it required? Are there people here start, hey, that are having a startup? Or a company? <laughs> you need a business plan? You have a business plan? Yeah. As from the beginning? Yeah. Yeah. Because if you start Googling, yeah. that's <laughs> <a company. laughs> it's mandatory, right? When you start a, a company. That's a financial plan. Uh, yeah. yeah, financial. So that's already like a misunderstanding. Uh, yeah. A lot of people think about a business plan like the Excel. And the Excel is just one small part of it. The business plan is like probably it's on your website what you are doing with bright expats and so on. Uh, the mission, the vision, the team and so on. So that's that's the business plan. But a lot of people now, uh, if you start googling, five reasons why you don't need a business plan. So there are people telling you don't need it. And then there are people telling, yes, you should write a fucking business plan. <laughs> Even lean companies and startups still need a business plan. So it's like, yes, but uh, you need a business plan, but it should not be like a tease of 100 pages. Uh, and it should not be only this Excel and so on. And, uh, or no, you don't need, although yeah, you need a pitch and you need a business model canvas and you need some other stuff which is also a business plan. So it's like a middle way. Yes, you need a business plan, but what's in the name of a business plan? 
and a lot of it depends on what kind of business you're starting up. The, the fact that you need a business plan and how big or how uh, it should look like, it depends on your business and it depends on the timing where you are in starting up this company. If you look at the business, your business, what kind of business do you start? You want to start. That's very important. This graph, everyone knows this graph. It's like this is the economy. This is all kind of all the businesses are in here. If you look at this big body of the dinosaur, we are talking about traditional businesses like bakeries, uh, restaurants, um, medical uh, medical jobs, and so on. Like traditional SMEs producing some products, they all have only a clear road ahead. Uh, bright, the sun is shining, they have a, a fuel station, they can probably uh, go uh, and tank some family over there at the banks. Um, they can go to KFC Brussels, they will be funded, probably. Because I, um, if there is belief in you as being an entrepreneur, if you as having a business plan, if they believe you can do this, and if there, there's some proof, like, okay, uh, it will happen, then you get funded by a bank. If I want to start up a bakery, I have 10,000 euros, my own money, and I have uh, all, I am qualified as uh, being a baker, uh, and I have a, a short business plan and I think, like, okay, we started up this bakery here in St. Stavus Wolleme, because there are not so much bakeries over here, I will probably get it, right? So and then if you go to the bank, even if you don't have a business plan, they will write your business plan. Because they, if you go for a loan application, that's a business plan. They will ask you the right question, they will ask you who you are, what are you going to do, why you need this money, and so on. So they will actually write a business plan in the loan application to get this loan. So that type of people, they maybe don't need this real business plan, it's in their heads but it's being written by the bank or by the accountant and so on. And they get um, probably an investment credit and they can start. So that's their funding mix. That's how they are being funded. Own funds and bank funding. And you can start. That's the bakery. But then there's also this long tail. Uh, and this is, this is yeah, the long tail economy, we call it. Uh, new kind of businesses. Bakeries are over here. Because there are a lot of bakeries, they are known business models. If you go to a banker, if you go to another person, you're telling, I'm starting up a bakery, they know what you're doing. Unless you, you tell them, I'm starting up a bakery and I will sell bread of 10 kilograms and, I will, and it costs you 20 euros. Then you probably don't get a loan at the bank also, because there's no market for this. Yeah, but normally, it's known. But this long tail is not known. For instance, the first one that entered, started at KBC in Antwerp was Neoscores. Somebody knows Neoscores? Are there musicians here? Somebody playing an instrument? Nobody. That's their product. Um, it's kind of iTunes store for digital sheet music. Uh, and it's an XML file. So you can, it's not just a PDF, but you can work on it. You can do some stuff. Um, and you have it everywhere, it's in the cloud. So um, uh, you can go to a shop and buy a book with the Fifth Symphony of Beethoven in it, or you can just buy it on uh, Neoscores and you have it everywhere on your computer, your tablet, your mobile phone, and so on. And then you can play music like this. Conservatorium, that's his, uh, his studies. He's a uh, master IT, master IT, also conservatorium, so they are passionate with music and they are highly educated and it's a really uh, hard business to start up because it's a double-sided market, it's not like a bakery yeah. because what do they need to do? They have like, on the, on, the, on the one hand they need to have contacts with all the, um, all the uh, big companies, the publishers who, have, who are owner of this uh, digital sheet music so first you have to try to convince them, like, okay, can we put your sheet music into XML files and put it on, a, on an online store? And they tell them, what? Because we are not used to do this. These traditional publishers, they are, only, they are completely into the paper business. They are not yet digitalized. Uh, so that's the first thing they had to do. 
So it's, it's already like very hard to do this. And then the second thing we have to do is like go to people, musicians, and get to uh, that they know that they don't need to go to the shop to buy a paper music, but they can also download this digital sheet music. So, but everywhere in the world, if iTunes does this, as Apple does this, they can do this. It's a big company, but as a startup, that's very hard. And so, it's not an easy way uh, to start up a business. And more and more startups are coming like this, with new business models, like with drones, with wearables, with in health tech, uh, with new distribution models and so on. Is it free or you have to pay something? You have to pay for, like, in iTunes if you want to have a 15 from your veto, it's probably 1 euro or 80 cent, and then you have it. Um, so, this number of startups, uh, if you go to startups.be, I don't know why, but the, the, the screen is a little bit, uh, it's some cut off for a, for a part, but it's not so bad. Um, if you look at this graph here, as of 2010, the number of startups increased a lot. Every, somebody knows why? What, what happened in 2009, 2010, why? And before this, there were only in Belgium like 50 startups, technology startups, companies in Belgium. Economic crisis? Economic crisis is one of the reasons, yeah, indeed, that people start thinking, rethinking about what am I doing here in this corporate? Maybe should I do something else? Uh, people got fired. Uh, that's one reason. Other reason? IT developments. IT developments and more spe more specific. <coughs> it's one of the cheapest distribution channels. Uh, before this, if you started a store, you probably need a store. But now you can like yeah, it's, via an app you can sell products or via a website you can sell products. So, uh, mobile and also cloud computing. Um, in 2006, if you started a software company, you already needed more than 100,000 euros to buy server capacity. Now you just get free uh, cloud space from Amazon, from uh, IBM, Microsoft and so on. It, it doesn't cost any way, it doesn't cost a lot anymore. And it's in the cloud, cloud computing is there. So it changed a lot, and that's why we also see like a big increase in the number of startups. In Belgium, if you look at like top locations for startup startups, Brussels is uh, by far uh, the most interesting uh, city, apart from Leuven, uh, Antwerp, and Ghent. Um, top industries in Belgium, you see here a lot of startups in healthcare. Uh, FinTech is also a very hot topic. So, I want to make a difference between this long tail economy uh, and this bakery and a startup company. Yeah. A startup company, once again, go back to Wikipedia. What's a startup company? It's an entrepreneurial venture, so it's an entrepreneur who wants to build a business. But a newly fast growing business with an innovative product, process, or service. So, innovative with the target to scale it up. Very important also. This bakery, you can't, you can't scale it. It's like this bakery, it's in, it's in stakes forward. And if you want to scale it, you, make, you have to make a franchise out of it and then like start a, a bakery network. That's, but, but that's difficult. With IT startups, with uh, digital uh, driven startups, it's uh, easier to scale. But non proven business models, like the business model of Neoscore. It's more proven. At that time, three and three years ago, it was more proven. Nobody bought uh, digital sheet music at that time. So you need to make a market, but if you succeed in it, the market is huge. So you're not working only for Belgium, but the, the whole world uh, can buy your products. Also, like five years ago, there was no some such thing as startups.be, which is a kind of federation. Uh, representing startups and their needs. If you go in Belgium you, uh, and you start up a business, you right away, uh, most of the entrepreneurs they think about or they start going to VOCA and Unison. These are like the typical, but they are not focused purely on these tech companies like startup.be is doing. So, but their road is not so bright. 
a proven business model. So and if you go to the banker, it's not KBC Brussels, <laughs> they will probably think about what the hell is this business about? I don't understand you. So you're thinking about a loan application, forget it. Um, because of this value of debt, again. Uh, starting up something new, and it's not only to bankers, it's also it's, it's to everyone. Uh, the guys from Neoscores, and they, they went to their friends telling about Neoscores, that the, all the friends, musicians, they all play music with sheets, with paper. So it's like, yeah, but why should I do this? Yeah, if, if my battery is low at my tablet, I... So you always have to convince people, because it's new. And change is, diff is, is difficult, everybody knows. But they are also funded in another way. Right? They are not funded like this bakery. He can start up his business with own funds and a bank funding. Now, if you go to the startups, to this uh, uh, long tail business, you're talking about own funds, bootstrapping, friends, family, schools, grants, bank funding, venture capital, crowdfunding, and most important, try to get some paying customers. That's where your funding comes from. So it's a kind of whole funding mix you need. Uh, and it's a, it's, a, it's, it's, it's a far more difficult way to get this funding done than this bakery that just goes to the bank and, and then it gets funded. But that's why we also, based on our lessons learned in Startup KFC, we started with innovation bankers. So we now have it at each place where started this, we have three, three uh, baker, uh, bankers who are uh, trained uh, in and they understand startup business, they're also trained, they know the whole funding mix and they can open up their network to get funded via grants, via other types of funding uh, and partially maybe uh, by funds from the bank. So that's about your business. So, so your business plan depends on how new, how innovative, how uh, your business is situated in this graph in the long tail or in the traditional sector. Well, I, apart from that, based on that, you need like a business plan or a real business plan. Um, and then timing is also very, um, very important, and it's, it, they are they are linked to each other and because it's related to how proven your business model is. If, if this really becomes a proven business model, like the first app was over here, but now X markets are already there, so. If something is proven and it gets big, it gets bigger. The market, you move up uh, on, the, on the graph. But these startups, like these technology companies, they need to experiment in the beginning. You need uh, because they are testing, and in this course they test like uh, more than ten times their product and their service, like uh, by doing changes uh, to see like what's what's working. Probably the first bakery ever. We also tested breads with of one kilogram, of half a kilogram, uh, all kind of colors and so on, but uh, they needed to test, to experiment, to come to this model like we know it now. And failing forward, and that's why there's a lot to do about failing forward, so it's not bad to fail, it's just, uh, it's very good to fail, because you learn by failing forward, by seeing that this type of business model is not working yet, and you get this experience and you can start building it and making it better. And that's what you need to do and that's why failing forward is very important. Uh, so it's a change of culture also that we need. If you look at uh, typically in Belgium, failing, if you failed before, uh, if you failed by uh, starting up a company, you get like a stamp uh, from, uh, from the government and so on. Like, okay, a failed entrepreneur. Uh, so if you enter a bank or somewhere else, that's like red light. Starting to light up like he failed before, so watch out. Um, but we, we need to get away from this culture because he probably learned a lot from this failure. You need a process to start up this business and this business plan to come up with this business plan. Um, and it's like uh, it's 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 a process. It's not that it's not all about the business plan. It's about the process of getting the business plan. And then you come to this book. Somebody read this book, The Lean Startup. People active in entrepreneurship here, who are working with entrepreneurs. If you do, this is the Bible. You should read this. 
this is really the book you have to read. If you, if you want to start up a business or if you want to coach some startups or you want to do business with them, then you have to do, you read this. And it's not about startups, as the title uh, might uh, make you think about, but it's about innovation and how to innovate, also as being a corporate, as a big, as a big company. <clears throat> so we as we then KDC, as an innovation banker, uh, an innovation manager, this is also my bill, because there's explained how you can innovate, how you can change, uh, in a, in a, typically in a new way, because 20 years ago it was like R&D, research and development, it was like a long process to change, to come up with something new, um, but now, nowadays, because the world is changing that fast, you should, you can't do it like this. You have, to, you need to be agile. You need to work like you need startups. And this is typically the bookshelf of the startups uh, at started that we uh, that we. Um, in Christ is uh, American, so he's, he's coming from the US. He's a professor at Stanford, uh, coming from Silicon Valley. Um, so, but design thinking, business model generation, the lean startup, all of the start, he Kawasaki is also well known. Uh, Pitch Perfect and Pimento Hub is a Belgian book, but we also put it here because we really think it's very useful. Um, and then, of course, there are plenty of other books, like Steve Blank is also uh, a very important author of, of uh, entrepreneurial books. So, but the startup journey, how does it look like? Because we were talking about timing. Um, this is coming from Omar Mahout, he's a Belgian professor, um, linked to CIRIS, Agoria, the technology sector, and this is like the four stages, it's not coming from him, it's like Steve Blank and Eric Reis are also talking about these four sta stages, but the guys from the course, they probably started with an idea, like we have an idea, we see iTunes, let's make an iTunes store for digital, digital sheet music. That's the ID stage. And then you start like looking at the problem, which problem you solve for the customers, or what kind of value you bring them, uh, and, and what kind of solution, how the solution should look like. So you start building something. And you start testing, and if you have like a product which really does it, and it's being, uh, people are interested in it, you have product market fit. And uh, if you have product market fit, you can think about scaling it. Before that, so four phases here from zero to one to come to uh, Eureka. Wow, we have it, we have a business model which can be scaled. Uh, it's going from zero to one. Then you need to do some cash preservation. Uh, going from zero to a lot, that's a lot, uh, you, you burn a lot of cash for this. And then you need uh, funding. Fund. But it's also about this is about searching your business model and executing your business model. And that's key, the product market fit. If you don't have a product market fit, you probably uh, still need to, uh, to fail forward, to come to it. And how do you, uh, what are the conditions to have product market fit? Well, you need to have uh, retention, uh, stickiness, that people uh, tell you and, and that you see also that they buy your product, uh, that you test it multiple times and that, that your sales engines, if you push a button, like Google AdWords or you push the button, send out key account managers, that you know like, okay, 50% of the people we contact, they buy it. If you know this, if you, test, you have tested this, then it's like just being a scientist. If, if near scores, if they knew and they tested it, like you can test it in, in Belgium, put some Google AdWords, and if we get a thousand people, thousand musicians, and 50 out of them, they buy some sheet music at near scores. And if we see that they bought one, after a couple of weeks, they buy another one, or they stop buying one, you have, it's purely statistics, you have statistics. Out of thousand, 50 buy, and out of these 50, only 20 buy again, and they stay there. If they then, if they then like uh, put a lot of money in Google AdWords worldwide to all musicians, it costs money of course. Like put one hundred thousand in it, and with putting one hundred thousand euros in the business, you probably get 
uh, 10 million musicians, you reach them, and the statistics work. So 10,000, so okay. Uh, out of this 100 million, probably only 10,000 will buy the sheet music, and out of this 10,000, so much will uh, stay in the shop. So it's purely statistics, like scaling up. Um, but it needs to be tested, and it needs to be robust. What do you need to do if you have product market fit? Frame the business model. So then you need a business plan, uh, including the pricing model. Here you can here you can try like okay, the Fifth Symphony of Beethoven, one euro is it to be, uh, is it too low or if you put it on five euro is it okay or not? So you can test it, and based on these tests, uh, yeah, you know the pricing. But it's very hard to come to a price. For a product or a service which doesn't which doesn't exist or is very scarce, and you need also to set up an advisory board because you can't do it on your on your own. Very important to have an advisory board. People that know your industry, that know how to set up a business, uh, or that they have some other that have a network you need. Um, so, but that's the magic of product market fit. So it's a validation stage. It's, you come to a validated business model. Uh, if you don't have a positive outcome here, don't go to the next stage because then you're burning cash and you go bankrupt. Um, so it's related to how proving your business model is. Once again, go to the bakery. They have product market fit. If I start a bakery, they already have product market fit because they know that we buy every day bread. The market is there. So. They, they don't need these first two stages that uh, the startups are having. Okay, going to the to how to build up this business plan then. Yeah, because that was the topic. How to come to this business plan if you're a startup and you're in the search phase. Don't write the business plan at that time. That's why probably you get on Google this type of articles. You don't need the business plan. At that stage, in the ideation, or in the problem solution fit, you really don't need a business plan. Because the business plan is a waste of time. You need to go to customers, you need to find the customers and try to get insights from them. You need to learn. So it's not about a plan, it's about the planning, building up your plan. Um, and then the lead startup, what they are telling, like, okay, build us, us up as soon as possible, a, pie, a, 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 a prototype. Uh, a, a minimal viable product, that's how they call it. Um, measure like how people are using it, see, uh, get some answers, some metrics, and if it's validated, uh, learn, adapt your assumptions and rebuild. And if you do this a couple of times, you probably come to a moment like, okay, now we think we have product market fit. Um, so it's about the process, that's the business plan. And then you use typically the business model canvas. Anybody already heard about the business model canvas? Did you use it? Yeah, we, we did when we started Bright Exact, and it's been a, a very uh, useful exercise. So it's, it's, I'm I can only recommend it. It's also uh, it's one language. All uh, the whole world knows the business model canvas. Uh, it's in, it, it's come, it comes from um, Österwald, Professor Österwald. He's a Swiss uh, professor. Uh, and it's being used all over the world and it's, it's a very easy uh, uh, model, canvas, to use to start up like your ID to, and to uh, start it's, you can compare it with the first drawings of your house if you start building a house an architect he makes like a detailed drawing, your plan you don't need this from the beginning, the first time you probably tell like I think I need this type of house and it should look like a little bit like this. So it's the first drawing. That's the business model canvas. You can use it to make the first idea of your business model. It looks like this. It's very easy. What's the value proposition? And what are you going to offer to, to who? Which customer segments? Uh, how are you going to reach them? How you distribute your product? How are you marketing marketing your product? What's your relationship with your customer? How do you get revenue out of it? What's the business name? How, is it a one-off? Is it a recurring business? And then on the left, what key activities you need to do, what key resources you need, and which key partners you need to do this value proposition. 
and what does it cost? And it's all like interrelated to each other. That's how it looks like if you Google business model cameras, you can get it for free. You can print it out on a, on a big paper, put it to the wall and start like within a team with post-its like, okay, let's do this, 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 this. As an example, this is about value creation. Okay, so uh, the value proposition and your customer segment, this is about value delivery. What's delivering this value? And this is about how you validate it into the model. If you look at Nespresso, it's very uh, well known. Their business model, their business model cameras looks like this. Like, okay, a first convenient, good quality espresso at home. That's our value proposition. Uh, or at the office. So for who? For households and businesses. Households who want to, who like to have like good coffee. At home. They have a relationship via the Nespresso Club. With uh, their channels, Nespresso.com, some boutique stores, uh, other retailers, and per cup they get a revenue and the machines is one of them. So that's the right, the right hand. What do they need? Key activities, the production, marketing, looking after club members, procurement and logistics, very important key resource, IP. And the first, uh, uh, the first uh, coffee machine of Nespresso, uh, it's patented, uh, that you cannot copy it right away. Uh, distribution network and so on, uh, machine manufacturers needed, coffee suppliers, celebrities for the advertising. And it costs, so it's very easy to make this business plan, uh, and this business model canvas. Um, and it's not related to the product. So if the product is a car, you can make different kind of business models out of it. And you can uh, rent cars, you can sell cars, you can do car as a, as a service or, and so on. So, we, and also like a, like a Ferrari, it's another customer segment. So they need another distribution channel, marketing channel, another uh, relationship with their customers as, as, as then Skoda, which are more for the low end. So it's, it's completely interlinked with each other. But a business model canvas, it looks great on paper, you can make it very fast. So that's why in the ideation, make this business model canvas. It's your first business plan, but then you have to do something with it because it's just it's just yeah, it does look great on paper, but it's just some assumptions that you've put on paper and some guesses you made. So then you have to get out of the building. That's the blank, by the way. Uh, get out of the way. Get out of the building. Do some design thinking to come to a minimal viable product. Do it lean, so favor experimentation over elaborate planning. Um, go for customer feedback. A minimal viable product is an experiment that tests a critical possible hypothesis <coughs> of your business. So what does it mean, an MVP? Well, I will come back with some examples. But this business model canvas can be used like in these four phases. It can be used like a couple of times to pilot. Okay, you have the first business model canvas. Yeah, it doesn't work. Okay, adapt customer uh, the customer segment, <laughs> and you adapt it, and you can do it a couple of times. That's why the business model canvas is the right tool, and you don't need to write a business plan at that time, and then rewrite it ten times because you put a lot of effort in it for nothing because nobody is going to be. Um, customer development very important. Uh, most of the startups they fail over here because they most of the of the startups most of the there's a difference between an entrepreneur and an inventor. An inventor is in love on his product and he's always thinking about his product. If you if you put him in front of customer development and you tell him okay you do the customer development he will go to the customers and tell that. What a magic thing I created. Wouldn't you like it? What would you like to buy it if it's 10 euros and so on? And then you get right, you ask the, the wrong questions and you don't get the validation. People maybe tell you, like, yeah, yeah, I would buy it, I would buy it, but in the end, they will, you probably don't buy it. Because that's not the right questions you, uh, you ask them. So then, the mock test gets very important. A cookbook for your iPad. Hmm. And it only costs 20 pounds.
That's cheaper than your hard bags on the shelf. Well, and you can share recipes with your friends. And there's an iPhone app which is your shopping list. And videos of that celebrity chef you love. Yes, dear. That sounds amazing. Twenty pounds is fine. Will it have pictures of the recipes? Yes, definitely. Thanks, Mum. I'm going to quit my job and put all my savings into my new startup. Won't you have some lasagna? That conversation led us down the garden path. The mum test is about talking to your customers about their life, not your idea. It's about discussing specifics in the past instead of generics or opinions about the future. It's about talking less and listening more. Let's do it again right this time. Hey mum, how's the new iPad? Oh, I love it. I use it every day. What do you usually do on it? Oh, you know, read the news, play Sudoku, catch up with my friends. What's the last thing you did on it? My dad and I are off on holiday. I was looking where to stay. Did you use an app for that? No, I just used Google. What app should I use? How did you find out about the other apps you have? The Sunday paper has a section on the apps of the week. Makes sense. By the way, I saw a couple of new cookbooks on the shelf. Where did those come from? Oh, they're one of those things you just end up getting at Christmas. I think Doreen gave me that one. Haven't even opened it. As if I need another lasagna recipe at my age. Hmm, time to refine my idea. We discovered many insights in that conversation to help us adjust our idea. It just goes to show, if you can get useful business information from mum, you can get it from anyone. The mum. Um, test. I think it's clear, no? Mm -hmm. So, that's the importance of uh, asking the right questions uh, and to come to validate the business model and a business plan. Because if you don't have this, you don't get to prove. So that's the process, you have to prepare it very well. If you go for an interview, uh, record it and so on. It's a, I don't need to go into details in it, but it's like a process, customer development. Uh, and you need to do it right. Uh, I have another movie um, about a lead startup. I also want to, uh, to show this, because that's actually... Um, the main lesson of the lead startup. to build companies that launch products quicker and more in line with customer needs. It eliminates long development times and large amounts of funding to launch a company. Many companies currently spend months or even years building and perfecting a robust product or service, only to learn that customers don't want specific features or the product altogether. This is the problem the Lean Startup solves. The Lean Startup involves a company building a minimum viable product or a product that has enough features to be released. Building only the minimum set of features is important in order to get the product in front of customers to get feedback. It may have some bugs, but the MVP is typically shown to early adopters who are more likely to look past these bugs. The company uses the MVP to get feedback in order to learn exactly what customers want. They take those learnings and decide whether to continue to build the product, whether to tweak the product, or to pivot which is a change in direction to test the hypothesis about the product, strategy, or engine of growth. The company continues this cycle, which is called the Build, Measure, Learn, Feedback Loop. The Lean Startup Approach shortens product development cycles and builds products that meet customer needs. 
through validated learning, scientific experimentation, and iterative product releases. So if you don't want to read the book, that's the book. <laughs> but all the new companies like Google, Facebook, Twitter and so on, they all learn they all they all used the lead startup way of building up their, their business. Facebook, they didn't knew that they were earning money like they are doing now. It's like by doing experimentation and so on that they learned uh, and that they got some validation that their business model was working. Some examples of MVPs, minimal viable products, Dropbox. They only got this move, a, a short movie and uh, got this vi uh, going viral via social media and so on. Like, wouldn't it be uh, great if you have this type of product, like uh, what Dropbox is doing? And by, if you're interested, you have to leave your email address. And on a couple of weeks, they got like millions of people like telling, okay, we want to have a Dropbox. Because at that time there was no Dropbox. That was their MVP. So they proved by all the emails they got, like, okay, there is a huge market for this. A lot of people are ready to, to like, even pay for it. The same with Zappos. The Zalando, everybody knows Zalando. Zappos is the, uh, the Zalando, but in the US. It started with one guy. He had the, the, the idea, like, okay, let's sell shoes on the internet. Probably I can make a business out of it, but I don't know how. He uh, made a deal with the local uh, shoe store. He went there and told, hey, can I make pictures of all your shoes? I will put them on the dummy website uh, where people can uh, click on it and then tell their, their size. And then I will come to the store, I will buy the shoes in your store and I will bring them to the customer. And by doing so, the first months he learned a lot. He learned that a lot of those shoes come back because the size is bad or the shoes look different than on picture or that they don't feel well.